<laughs> I mean, the report's there now, but they won't let them see it till after the election. Interesting. Mm. Scary. So, yes, yes. The uh, current current government lack um, lack of protection when it when dishing out licences to compromise with uh, tarnished deep water horizon records like Texan own and Darko it makes the future bleak for New Zealand, which must rank as one of the most beautiful, unspoiled countries in the world. Yes, sadly for New Zealand, uh, 30 years ago, they discovered that New Zealand's east coast has more oil and gas than in the North Sea, and the land abounds with undeveloped minerals. We're, we're of volcanic origin, so I guess it goes back to that. They say it would be good for our economy um, to do this, um, but they seem to be dishing out licences willy-nilly to you know, people who don't seem to have the capabilities for safety. I think it would be good if, if they could develop some of these carefully without destroying the country. But if they use these cowboy people, which is what they seem to be doing now, cowboys from Texas, an oil spill and harm to our precious water from fracking would actually be to the advantage of these um, um, cowboys because once you've done a reversible harm to our environment, it means that to survive, our economy would then be totally dependent on mineral extraction. Indeed. And I think this, this is, is really, really frightening because we've only got to have one bad oil spill and we've lost our fishing industry, we've lost our tourism, our clean green mm. image. So then mm. we're just wide open. We've, got no, we're, we've lost all our choices. Our water is so beautiful we could export it all over the world. Well, that, that, was, oil. Th that was once, Penny, but uh, we know now that, 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 you know, all that's over. There's a lot of people doing a lot of work on, on our poisoned water, and there are many, many reasons for it. But, you know, again, we're connecting the dots on that process now. Our clean green image is a load of nonsense. I mean, we have uh, severe geoengineering taking place over our country. Most people are unaware at this point. But that will all come out soon. It will all come out so. in the wash. Um, we just have to be more diligent. We, indeed, we do. Um, this is this is extraordinary information. Do you think outside corporations are deliberately using frequencies as described on the HARP website to increase quake harm in specific areas of, of Canterbury? I don't know. I mean, it's quite mind-boggling to think that that could be what's actually happening. Um, but over the over history. When people um, want something that a, a country has, like we've got oil and gas and minerals and we're very strategically located, um, all sorts of um, odd things have happened to capture these countries, haven't they? Um, I find it very disturbing that some of the US delegation here in Christchurch, there was a huge delegation of congressmen and military people, and some of them seem to have been warned uh, on the morning of an impending quake and hurriedly left Christchurch before the convention was finished and before the quake. I find it very disturbing that the pattern of quake locations occurs where frequencies interact and texts and research fail to supply information that should be readily available and that the um, quake scientists have continued to say that the Christchurch earthquakes are a puzzle due to the huge energy released in relation to the magnitude of the quakes. And they say there is something there we can't see. And they say as you approach Christchurch, the aftershocks seem to get shallower and shallower. That shallowing most likely reflects a change in the crustal structure. But it could also mean that that's where the towers are, that it's, that's where it's focused. They say it was a very complex earthquake. Why was it complex? Are most earthquakes like this? Or is there something special about the tectonics of Christchurch? There are many unanswered questions, aren't there? And hopefully this predicted quake will not wipe Christchurch out in the next mm. few days. Uh, just, um, you know, there's lots of answers we need to these things, but um, it's a pretty terrifying place here in Canterbury at the moment. Yes, and, and a lot of a lot of what the frequencies that you're under are being blamed on the constant quakes, you know, the stress levels, the, you know, uh, there, it's just pure radiation sickness. Penny, I, I just want to touch before we leave on the coincidences around the quake. Uh, they're very interesting. I mean, not only, as you said earlier, did nine congressmen uh, leave Christchurch right before... Were they nine? The, I didn't know how many they Yeah, the, mm. the second quake that was during the September quake. I didn't quake, know that, no. The killer one. 
So, Penny, I just want to touch on uh, uh, the coincidences around the quake to finish up. Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, there were congressmen that left uh, Christchurch just at just two hours prior to the quake. There were actually nine of them, uh, they, and they headed up to Wellington. The US Secretary of Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano, uh, cancelled her trip to speak in Christchurch. Uh, the FEMA Deputy Administra Administrator, Timothy W. Manning, was in New Zealand when the quake struck. Now, I will offer links to anyone in our chat room there uh, for this, this information. There were 116 SAF personnel, Singapore Army, in Christchurch for a training exercise at the time of the quake. And these training exercises have become notorious around the world. When the training exercises are happening, there is generally a natural disaster. Not only that, but 400 Australian doctors happened to be attending a conference in Christchurch. Handy that we had all those extra doctors on board. And... Interestingly, the quake happened on the 111th anniversary of the HARP technology. Oh, really? Yes. That's amazing. The I, was actually, I was actually told that the original setup in Alaska of those antennae was actually uh, set up by um, Texan um, mining people, I don't know if that's true or not, I've got no idea, and then it was then taken over by the US military. Do you have any more information on that? We do know that it was taken over by the US military later, yes. But you don't uh, know who set it as up? As to its original, I will um, dig and find out for you, Penny. I'll certainly pass that information well, on to you. Well, perhaps people who are listening might be able to inform us of what, what the origins of it were. Certainly. All right, mm. now the epicentre um, at the peak of the triangle... Uh, um, it, it's a, there, there was a triangle of three main roads. All right, the, the, the peak of that lands in the middle of Rothschild-owned land. And that, oh, that land uh -huh. has recently been sold on. Uh, but most importantly and directly related to our story here were the 100 stranded whales that died on Stewart Island on the 21st, the day before the killer quake. As I said, I have... Oh, really? Yes. On the 21st of February? Indeed, and mm. I have links to all of all of these statements that I have just made. There's actually a, a harp, um, big um, antenna ball down there, which is anchored in the ocean um, off the Mutton Bird Islands, which is uh, south of, of uh, Stewart Island. We'd li like some information on that, Penny. We know about the Superdan facility that is that is down there. There's in one south. there's one that's anchored in the deep water down there. I know that it's it's on it's on the web. You just go into I mean, it's all published. It's just a, um, a great big um, buoy, the harp antenna, a uh, harp buoy that's anchored south of Stuart Island. Ah, there's the missing information for us. Bless you, mm. Penny. Mm. Um, we'd like to thank you for joining us today, Penny. Uh, the, the information's knocked our socks off and certainly helped us connect a series of missing dots in our own research to electromagnetic frequency. We'd like to ask you if you may consider returning for another interview at a later date. Uh, I get the feeling that this is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, I think the situation with the fracking uh, worldwide and the effects of, of the um, pollution into our waterways and the increase of of, um, of quakes in areas which don't have a seismic record are absolutely terrifying. And um, instead of spending all that money spoiling the environment, it would be much better if they spent some of the money to actually look at alternative use of energy with the sun, the tides and the wind. Yes, yes, we're losing you a wee bit there, Penny, in volume. Um, I've just had a question uh, from a listener. He said, uh, can we ask Penny to run through the Irish IRA coming to Christchurch as a workforce to, uh, to rebuild? I don't know if they're IRA. I've got no idea if they're IRA. Um, all I know is that, um, is that I was told that um, Mr. Finlinson has gone to Ireland and has um, asked for 5,000 Irishmen to come to New Zealand um, to work on our, our building sites here, which seems quite extraordinary because 
Um, we've got 17,000 people out of work here and none of the building work is actually commencing because of insurance problems. So it seems quite extraordinary to be looking for extra people to come and build when we actually don't have... have um, I don't know whether these people are IRA or not. I would think out of 5,000 workers, um, depending whether they're from Northern or Southern Ireland, some of them may have a history of working with the IRA. I don't know. It's fascinating. We've got all these builders uh, that were, you know that were positioned to begin helping rebuild as soon as the event uh, had happened, and uh, you know so many of them were put on hold. There was no work there for anyone. It was. It's but then to go overseas, then to go overseas, they said mm. the Irish government's absolutely delighted because they've got a building downturn, so they're delighted not to have to pay welfare for these five thousand men. So it just seemed extraordinary to me that we're paying welfare for seventeen thousand out of work Irish. people here. And yet we're importing 5,000 Irishmen. I mean, it seems that we could be taking a few from England, a few from from um, Australia or the islands, but why 5,000 specifically from Ireland? It just seems extraordinary to me. Indeed, indeed it does. And, and there, mm. look, you've opened up so many areas of research for us on this, connected many, many dots, and... Uh, just when we thought we were getting our head around it, um, you've you've thrown so much more at us. So Penny, we oh, would I'm like sorry. to thank you. <laughs> I'm thank sorry. You. This this has been a very long journey for me, and oh, please I don't, don't think, be sorry. Mm, it's um it's been a devastatingly sad journey for me, as you can imagine. Um, yes. Um, and I just hope the journey doesn't get any worse with what looks, you know, what they're. Some people are predicting might happen the next few days. Yes, indeed. All eyes are all eyes are watching, and uh, certainly the people that are listening to this broadcast are are aware of what you are saying. We appreciate the warning. Uh, we appreciate the information. Penny Arahanui from from me in New Zealand. And thank you very much, Penny, from thank me. You, Pat. Thank you. Me in the U.S. Thank you. Okay, folks, you've been listening to Revolution Radio's Geo Up, Over and Down Under with Rose and Cat. Penny Hargraves was our fabulous guest today. Uh, if, you've, if you've been tuned in, connect with us. Uh, you can catch us at freedomslips.com or thecontrail.com. Uh, we look forward to connecting. Good night, all. <laughs>